darlings. How are you doing? This live is for you if you feel like you're in the trenches. If you feel like it's really fucking hard right now. If you feel like you are wandering aimlessly in the desert, like the boy in The Alchemist. If you feel like, what the fuck? How does it get to be so easy for everybody else? And it's an absolute royal shit show around here. This live is for you. Good morning. Morning, Jen. How are you doing, darling? So what I wanted to share with you was that I know that it's not always hearts and rainbows all the time. It's not all fucking, you know, high vibes and high fives, is it? Let's be real. Morning, darling. Hi, Yvette. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Um, it's not always all high fives and big smiles and all the rest of it. And I've spoken to a few clients recently who have been really feeling this. And if you haven't watched my stories, I... I opened Courageous AF 15, well, I didn't open the actual masterclass 15 minutes early, but before we started, there was somebody already in the waiting room and it was someone that I'd worked with before. And I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to let her in. We're going to have a chat while I burn my um, Palo Santo and all of that stuff. And I caught the conversation and I shared it in my stories and so many people were like, that's for me. That's exactly what I needed to hear. Let me just say hello to a few people. Morning, gorgeous. Hi, Jilly. How are you doing, darling? Who else is here? Charlotte's here. So what I wanted to talk about was I've spoken to a couple of clients and one friend who feel like they are in the trenches right now. They feel like it's rough. It's shit. They're not enjoying it. And they feel like they're getting behind. They feel like they are neglecting their businesses. They feel like they don't have the energy to put into the business because life, because life, because of things that are going on around them with their family, you know, with their work maybe, with, you know, just like life, basically. Life, life will be a fucking constant distraction. And we as business owners are navigating life alongside this like business journey, this entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial journey. Morning, Cares. Morning, Jesse. So I'm going to repeat what I said to one of these people, one of them the other day, which is they, they were saying, you know, I feel like I'm not putting enough into it. And, you know, this is obviously going to slow me down and blah, 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 blah. And they were really overwhelmed. They were really stressed by the things that were going on in their life. And I said to them this, slow down and take care of you. Because taking care of you is taking care of business, literally. You are the most important resource in your business. It isn't going to exist without you. But more importantly, you can't make clear, like, crisp, strategic, like, cl like really clear decisions when you are not fully resourced. When you are, let's just call it what it is, dysregulated. When you are in a state of dysregulation, so that's like any kind of stress, not not enough sleep, you know, not been drinking enough, cortisol levels are running wild, you are in a state of dysregulation. And when we're dysregulated, when we're not like fully resourced, you lose executive functions, gone. And what happens is you end up going into this place of protection because you're like, I literally can't handle any more of this shitstorm. This is as much as I've got like capacity for. Don't throw any more towards me. And so we like start to close down and close down and close down. And all the thoughts that we have are shrinking small thoughts, protective thoughts that are going to stop us from doing anything that is going to compound an already massive fucking dumpster fire that's going on. So let me just say hi. I just like to say hi. Hi. Kim, hi beautiful love. Hi Sally, morning, morning. Who else is here? Oh, Samantha's here. Hi darling. So go back to the beginning and watch from the beginning if you haven't already. In those moments when you are not fully resourced as a person, as a, as a, as a walking, talking nervous system, you will want to burn it to, to the ground. You will want to burn it to the ground 
or you will want to like start that OnlyFans account that you've been pondering or go and get a job or you might want to like literally say like I don't want to do it anymore just want to just give up on it and go do something else that's easy or you're going to tell yourself that you're missing the boat I'm missing the boat I'm missing all the opportunities like I'm slowing myself down and I'm getting behind you're not you're not you're just not fully resourced. So the first rule of business in these moments is to become fully resourced. And sometimes, I know that this sounds a bit like fucking patronising. Sorry, I am going to swear, I know it's early. But fully resourced means slowing down, drinking water, having a nap, eating something, and basically just taking stock for a little while. And dependent on how big the stress is, dependent on what it is that you are dealing with in life, you might not be able to do that and return to this place of clarity and executive function and fully like self-resourced like capacity. You, you might not be able to do that in 24 hours. It might take longer. And life actually, the distractions of life might actually be the things that you really need to Save your capacity for, reserve that capacity for, for the kids, for the work thing, for the personal life stuff, for the whatever it is. So when you're having those thoughts, those protective, small, close thoughts, I want you to see it that that is your cue that you need to pour into yourself at that point. That is taking care of business. It's not, it's not going to make or break your business if you take some time for you, especially if, like most of the people that are in my world, your business revolves around you. And it's you that's bringing everything in your life to business, not even just behind the scenes, but like if you're the main thing, you know, if you're a midwife, without you, there's no midwife thing going to be done, is there? If you're a doula, without you, there's no doula thing going to be done. If you're a coach, without you, no coaching's going to get done. So we have to resource, we have to take care of the most important resource in the business. So, <coughs> I got a bit of a cold. I just surrendered to this cold at the weekend and it's, it's on its way out now, but I was like, I, I could sit here and tell myself all the reasons why I should still be doing this and I sh I'm in the middle of a launch and I should be showing up and blah, 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 blah. But I was like, I'm not fucking abandoning me. I'm not abandoning me. I'm the most important resource in my business. I am going to surrender to this being ill and start to get better without forcing it and forcing it and forcing it. So a little analogy that Keith once said to me, he loves a sporting analogy. He played rugby at quite a high standard when he was a young chap. And one of his coaches once said to him something along the lines of, you know, when like you're literally getting your ass kicked on the field, when they are literally like, D completely smashing you into next week that is not the time to try and push and push and push and push it's not the time to give up but it's the time to go easy on yourself it's the time to like sit back a bit like regroup catch your breath and be like okay where are we going now it's not like hammer back hammer back hammer back hammer back the time to really fucking push is when the wind's behind you. And that's when you're fully resourced. When you, you're well rested, when you're well fed, when, you, when you've not got all the stress of the world. And, and that's never going anywhere. But when you feel like you've got more capacity to deal with it, and sometimes what that requires is for you to slow down, take space and give yourself that clarity. So... It made me think when I was thinking about that, you know, when we were in our most, not just financially challenging, but one of the most challenging periods of our life as a family um, was when Hebe and Sid were both under two years old. I had two under two and a teenager. Can we just like take a moment? Two under two. And a 15, 16-year-old rampantly hormonal teenage girl in the house. Like, 
life was definitely a distraction back then. And I had, we had as a team decided that I was going to completely stop working to focus on the kids and my doula business. We were going into this chapter in our lives where we were saying goodbye to my salary. And actually, literally just before we got married, Keith stepped down from his position. At that time, he was an assistant head teacher and he stepped down and took a regular teaching job because his dad was terminally ill. And he decided it was more important to give himself space because he had enough things that he was navigating. And he wanted to spend that time with his dad. We wanted to spend that time with his dad. So he stepped down. So we took a hit on my salary. We'd already taken a hit on his salary. We had a mortgage, we had three children. We previously used to like flit off to New York on holiday and go out for tea three times a week and you know, do all of the things. But this was the phase of life that we were choosing to go into. We didn't choose what happened with his dad, but we chose how we move through that. We chose that it was more important for us to have time and space than it was to have the resources of money. And so we just lost Keith's dad. We'd lost a full-time salary, my full-time salary. We'd dropped his salary. We had a mortgage to pay. We had to put the mortgage on interest only because we didn't actually, we couldn't balance the books, pay the mortgage and have enough money to live on if we didn't do that. I'm just remembering as well, like talk about a difficult time. I also ran over our cat. Like I literally killed our cat. Anybody who knows me knows how I feel about animals. I fucking ran over my own cat on the drive and killed it. That was not the highlight of my life. Let me tell you, let me have a little quick drink of this coffee. So, but I was start, that's, we chose that that's where we were, right? We chose where we were. And we lived on 250 quid a week. And when I say we lived on that, that was how much we had cash in our hands Every Thursday, we used to draw it out of the bank on a Thursday and that cash had to last us. And I'm not talking about like for treats. I'm talking about the petrol had to come out of that. The food shopping had to come out of that. Any clothes for the kids, any clothes for us, everything had to come out of this 250 quid a week. I mean, I can generate in my business what we were living on for a whole year. I can do that in a month these days, which kind of blows my mind. But what we did was, we were like, we choose to be in this space. This is where we wanted to be. We wanted to have a family. We wanted to have these kids, for better or worse. You know, we wanted to spend that time with his dad before he passed away. And we actually borrowed money. We borrowed money to buy a caravan. So instead of flitting off to New York and San Francisco and wherever else we fancied, we were like, we're going to borrow money. We're going to pay it back. And we're going to have a little caravan and that's how we're going to go on our holidays because this is the season that we're in in our lives right now. And that is when we started the Jar of Loveliness. That is when, and we've, we've got the Jar of Loveliness right over there right now. Still got one. And we started that Jar of Loveliness because we were like, let's focus on what we've got. Now the cat is about to have a shit. So you're going to hear a lot of scratching in the background because she's just got inside to her, got inside of her thing, you know, the litter tray. So get ready for... But we, that's where we were in our lives and we decided like the jar of loveliness was going to remind us on a constant basis every day that the cat's having a shit. No, that, that, that we were... We were so fucking lucky. We were so blessed. We were so fortunate. We had all of the things. We, we didn't, we chose to be in this chapter. Like how blessed we are that we chose to be in that space. So we started the jar of loveliness and every day, and we still do this now, when we were grateful for something, when we are grateful for something, we write it down a little bit of paper, fold it up, put it in the jar of loveliness and on New Year's Eve we'll open it up again like we did this New Year's Eve and look at all the amazing things that we've got to be grateful for. Things are different now. Nothing's different. 
we're still just as grateful. We still are in a season that we choose to be in right now. So I want you to, if it's hard right now, decide. I can either make this harder by layering on top of the fact that I am tired or stressed or dealing with things that I really wish that I wasn't dealing with. I can either like manage that or I can layer on top of that another layer of fucking guilt and resentment and shame and all of the things because I'm not doing it right. I am neglecting my business. I am getting behind. I am doing all those things. What if you just fucking embrace where you were? What if you were just like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And rather than trying to push when the wind is in your face, you were like, okay, what do I need to do to get myself to that place of clarity again? Because when you create space, all kinds of magic happens. Because you're not having these like tiny, contracted, protective thoughts. She's now going on the scratcher. She's, this fucking cat is not even like, she's like a caricature of herself. So if you end up then moving into this space of connection, moving in this to this space of like executive function and clarity, because you have become a self, a fully resourced person once more, as much as possible, because you are rested, you have given yourself space, you have stopped talking to yourself like shit. You start talking to yourself like you would talk to your clients. You started using the tools and the resources that you fucking tell everybody else to use. That one, like, is not lost on me. The amount of people that are in my world whose message is about valuing themselves and asking for support and saying no and being present and value, you know, like, and speaking to themselves with kindness and da 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 And they literally do fucking none of those things for themselves. Like, please, hashtag embodiment. That is the dictionary definition of taking care of you is taking care of business. Maybe you're in a season where you are teaching the things you actually need to fucking learn. Maybe you need to learn. So please meet yourself where you're at. Give yourself space. When you hear that closed protective voice, be like, right, how can I get back to connection? How can I get myself back to a place where I feel fully resourced and able to have the clarity about what my next steps are? Life will be a constant distraction. There will always be stress constantly. It's about how you navigate it. And then it's about meeting yourself where you're at and being like, this is where I am. I choose to be here. No one's trapped. Nobody is trapped. And you might think to yourself, well, I am because I don't have a choice and I don't want it to be like that. But honestly, if anybody can think of a situation where they feel like they don't have a choice, come to me and I bet you I can find you a way out of it. It's just that you don't want to fucking take it. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Doesn't mean you can't. Doesn't mean it's not possible. So to make an empowered choice to not be trapped. To not trap yourself. So... Stop being a giant crap magnet is the short part of it. Please stop being a giant crap magnet. Be kind to yourself. Speak to yourself the way that you'd speak to your clients. Use the tools and techniques that you already have. Teach the things that you need to learn. Remember that that's like a thing that happens. And if all else fails, just remember life will be a constant distraction. We're all just doing the best that we can. No one moment, no one thing, no one pause, no one break will make or break your business. What will make your business is you taking care of you. Asking for what you need, getting the support that you need, taking the space that you need, bringing yourself back to clarity. And yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you this morning. I want to end with this though. If you think that you are like failing at parenting, this morning I found out that my son, who is almost 14, 
didn't even know that a gooseberry was a real fucking fruit. He sat on the sofa this morning at eight o'clock and went, oh my God, goose, berry, it's a real fruit. And I was like, you were today years old when you learned that, Sid. So, you know, we're all doing the best job that we can. And <laughs> that's my parenting win for the day. Oh, so that's what I want to show you. What I will end with by saying is, because it wouldn't be right otherwise. Today at midnight, sleaze free sales is doubling. It's going up from 111 to 222. I want you in there. I want you in there with me. If you are watching this live now and you're already in it, please like say I'm in and hi and all that stuff. Also, if you love this live, will you give me a little love heart or send me a message or something like that if you appreciated this message? Um, and yeah, sleaze free sales tonight. I am going to be sharing my non-manipulative, non super fun strategies and techniques for selling easily without it feeling icky and horrible. And it works. I have used this only inside of my one-to-one -one up until now. I'm doing it in a group because I want to get it in the hands of as many people as possible. My people are the people who want big impact and big income the doulas, the midwives, the parent coaches, the coaches, the, all the people that are literally out there changing the world, I want you to win. Come into Sleaze Free Sales. Let me show you how much fun it gets to be, but also how you can end up with dozens and dozens of people in your programs. You can end up with thousands in revenue before you've even launched, before you've even started. I want to show you it all. I want to teach you it all. I want to pass it all on to you. So, join me in Sleeves Free Sales. All right, my darlings, have an amazing day and I will speak to you soon. I think you're amazing. Loads of love. Ciao, ciao. Bye.